Welcome to July Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. And what a day it has been for cryptocurrency. First up, Rao Powell now says that 98% of his net worth is in crypto. This is pretty amazing because just in October, it was only 50%. So I think he is making a massive bet also. And this could be why, because PayPal is actively advertising cryptocurrencies on Twitter and other formats. Also, legendary investor Paul Tudor Jones hints that because of fractals, this could be a possible explosive Bitcoin rally. And it's a nice way to look at a chart, but in all reality, we know where Bitcoin's going. And finally, as a follow-up, I'm going to transfer some XRP from my ledger to my Celsius wallet, just to show everybody how it's done and they can be ready for the spark airdrop. And we'll get into all that, but first, take a look at what's going on in the markets. So today, it is uh, November 30th, it is almost 3 p.m. Texas time, let's see what we got. Well, Bitcoin touched a high of around 19.8 something. I can't remember exactly what it was. Actually, CNN did a report on it, which talks about Bitcoin reaching its all-time high. So you can just know that when CNN is going to report on something, eh, it's not a good sign. Usually we see a little bit of a tumble, but again, this may be a different bull run. Ethereum is above 600, that's fantastic. XRP making those huge gains, 46 for the week. Tether's Tether, 19 billion, like to see an audit on that. Bitcoin Cash is at 312, wow, that's pretty good, 10% up. Chainlink's up, everything's up. I mean, let's just, let's just call it what it is. Wow, great, everything is up. And this is fantastic to look at, but what's really important is to take a look at how this compares to Bitcoin. Not to take a look at how Bitcoin is for the dollar or how Ethereum is for the dollar, but really we're gonna take a look at how these altcoins are doing against Bitcoin. Well, if you had invested in Ethereum, well, you're 2% up to, uh, in 24 hours, that's pretty good. 1.2 for XRP, Tether, eh, that's just a dollar, right? 4% you'll be up for Bitcoin Cash. And actually the top six or so, you're doing pretty good. Past that, you're not doing so hot because you really just should have invested into Bitcoin. Unless you're invested into Aave, so good for you. And a little bit of uh, for urine finance and everything else. So that's really what's going on with the market. Let's just jump into today's stories. So first off, I'm not gonna harp on this too much. We all know Raul Powell is a huge Bitcoin you know, fan. That only makes sense. But there's a couple of things that he said in here that was pretty interesting. I mean, one of which was you know how much he actually invested uh, into Bitcoin. And I'll just sum this up into a couple sentences. October 7th, he was on Stansbury Research. It was a nice little interview. Uh, it was him and um, Daniela Cambone. And we've already covered that. And he said, hey, I've got 50% uh, in Bitcoin. I thought that was a lot. I was like, wow, it's, uh, it's pretty ballsy. But uh, then, and that was at the beginning of October. And then the middle of October, he saw this tweet storm saying that, you know, Bitcoin is a massive black hole and it's going to suck everything into it. It's kind of like the same along the lines that Alex Mashinsky was talking about as far as like what cryptocurrency is going to do for the internet. It's going to swallow the internet whole. And you can just see it right now. I mean, all the different money that is coming in from, from retail and, and investors and hedge fund managers and all these different people just coming in. Before you know it, you're like, where's all the money? Oh, it's all in Bitcoin. So that's just how I see things. And that's why I, when I see these dips, I'm like, who cares? Who cares about these dips? The only reason I care that Bitcoin price goes down, that just means that I can buy more at a more of a percentage. So last week when it actually went down, I talked about this last week, once it goes down to like what I feel is like a baseline around 18.5, almost 19,000, I said, wow, it's already at like 17 or 16.5. I woke up at like 4.30 in the morning like I usually do. And I'm like, I got to buy more of this. So usually every day I buy a certain amount of all my different cryptocurrencies. And in this situation, I'm like, wow, I mean, Bitcoin went down that much. I got to dump 20% more of what I would usually spend. So if I, you know, put in a hundred bucks, I would put in $120 and so on and so forth. So there are just some days when I just feel like, hey, I'm not going to FOMO all the way in, but I'm going to increase my uh, my positions as far as my dollar cost averaging. And that's one of those days. And this is the exact same thing that I see moving on into the future. And Raul is just like me. I mean, he's I, he's a little bit different, right? He makes a lot more money. Let's just be honest. Uh, but he says right here, he goes again, and he's talking about Bitcoin and gold. This is the best trader investment and future opportunity I have ever found. And it has the power to give the little guy a chance to grab their share of the wealth creation before Wall Street does. Grab it. You need to grab it. That's really what it comes down to. 
all these different FUD articles and talking about how Bitcoin is going to be regulated. And before you know, it's going to disappear and it's just going to be, it's going to go to zero and the tulip mania and all that BS is just a way for them to steal Bitcoin from you. Don't you get it? All they want to do is scare the living hell out of you. So you will, sh you will sell your Bitcoin, all your cryptocurrency, so they can get their dirty, grubby hands on it and they can sit on it and drive the price up. And before you know it, you're like, oh, I got priced out. I used to have it, now I don't. And it's one of those things that upsets me because I just feel like if people would just not get too emotional in the whole thing, I mean, now here I am talking, I'm getting emotional because I'm getting ticked off. But as far as like investing, there's no reason just to go, ah, you know, I, I, I don't know. And I think it's going to just put a little bit in. Don't gamble so much just invest and sit on it and just don't even think about uh, the money that you have and it's amazing like in 2017 when i was going through this i'm like why, why do people tell me that it just seems so ridiculous i have to check the price all the time i've got to do all these things but it's not the case you just invest into it long-term investor i don't know when bitcoin's gonna go to 100,000 or 300,000 or whatever else but i know it's gonna get there I just don't know when it's going to get there. So I will just invest a little bit slowly but surely, and it will eventually get there. But again, if you're thinking that, uh, you know what, it's just going to go to zero or whatever else, I just I just don't see it. I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comment section. There's always a couple of people who uh, tell me how wrong I am. <laughs> so anyhow, moving on. Oh, let me go forward. These two quotes or these two tweets really just tell the whole thing. He says, I'm going to explain this again. And he's, he's talking about regulation when people are talking about like this, this goofball, J, uh, Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan talking about how Bitcoin's going to be regulated. He goes, look, I'm going to explain it again. You might hate, re hate regulation of Bitcoin. You might have a massive philosophical aversion to it, and that's fine. But they're going to regulate the fiat on ramps and off ramps, and it will make you rich as institutions now will be able to adopt it, trade-offs. So what he's talking about this is, this is the same reason why Brian Armstrong got so up in arms when there was this big article about Steve Mnuchin who was going to start to regulate uh, these on and off ramps and also for where the cryptocurrency was going into which wallets out from these exchanges, these off ramps and on ramps, such as um, Coinbase. So he was upset. He's like, oh man, that's that's more regulation for me. Then people may not use it. And then look, I already talked about how I think they're sucking wind anyhow. I think they're crumbling from the inside because there's so much competition out there. You can watch the video uh, it was for yesterday. But yeah, I mean, that sucks for an exchange owner, but don't feel bad for them and their billions. I think they'll be okay and they'll figure out a way to, uh, to uh, still rip us off in fees. <laughs> but really what it comes down to is this. Yes, that's a pummer and it's going to be a problem and we're not going to like it. But Raul's right. Uh, all these different institutions where they need, you know, permission from their upper, upper, upper boss to actually do anything. Well, now they have regulation. Now they have these things in place. Now they can get in the game. And when they can get in the game, they're bringing massive amounts of money to this inst this situation. And they're able to put it into Bitcoin, which will raise the price. The problem with these institutions getting in is they're going to do the, their same dirty tricks that they've all done the market and manipulate. You thought whales were bad in 2017? I think these institutions are even worse. And that's why when I see these dips, I'm like, there is only one reason for that. And it is those huge whales out there, whether they be institutions or not. I just don't see good things. And that's why I don't like to actually even look at the charts anymore. And I may even do away with CoinGecko in the very beginning because it just makes people like, oh, I don't know, look, I don't know when it's going to get there, but it's going to get there. And last piece, he says, okay, last bomb. I got a sell order and tomorrow to sell all my gold and scale to buy Bitcoin and ETH. And he said it's an 80-20 split. I don't, I don't own anything else except some bond calls and some, some dollars. 98% of my liquid net worth. So uh, you can't categorize me except irresponsibly long. Good night. And then Dan Held says, why is it 80-20? And he says, I don't know. He goes, I think it's a hunch. I think... Ethereum outperforms uh, Bitcoin by five to one. Not, and that one, I don't think it's a hunch. I think it's an inevitability because with Ethereum, everything's built on Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum 2.0, I was kind of on shaky ground with their launch, but uh, they blew it out the water. And it's going to come on December 1st, and they've got billionaires investing into those funds and pumping Ethereum into the staking pool. So 
I don't see a problem with that. I think it's going to be huge. I think it's a $10,000 coin. And right now it's only at 600 bucks. So when he says he thinks it's going to uh, massively outperform Bitcoin, yeah, it will. So that's why I got a lot of Bitcoin and I got a lot of Ethereum. Not figuratively speaking, of course. I don't have hundreds or thousands or something crazy like that, but I got enough and I feel pretty good. And I really think that thing's going to do well. And if it doesn't, well, I got a lot of Cardano. <laughs> so that's it for that story. Let me know what you think. Let's move on to the next. Next up, this is just a little small piece. And I thought it was interesting because, you know, when PayPal got in the game uh, with cryptocurrency, I, when the rumors first came out, I was like, yeah, of course they're going to get into it. Square got into it. And the reason that Square got into it is for two reasons. One, because Jack Dorsey is such a huge Bitcoin fan. And two, is because it drove half of, of Square's revenue for the fourth quarter. So why wouldn't uh, PayPal do the same thing? They're like, oh, you're telling me that we can... Uh, almost double what we're doing right now. Uh, and all you gotta do is just add these four goofy coins because I'm gonna tell you right now, they don't believe in cryptocurrency. If they did, they would let you uh, move it off platform or at the very least do other some type of like provision, but they're not doing that. They just, and especially with all the different um, uh, vendors and things like that, they're not letting the vendors keep the, the cryptocurrency. They're changing out for fiat because they don't want them to deal with the instability. So when I see something like this, they know what's going on. They see how much money is being generated. This is their biggest cash cow that they just could have stumbled on because right now it's free for all the PayPal users to get hooked into Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin. But that's pretty much how all institutions and all businesses do it. Like here's a little bit of free. You like that sweet candy? Why don't you come on inside because we got a lot more where that came from. And people are going to keep buying, especially as the price goes up. As the price goes up, they're like, I got to buy some more. And it's a continuous flywheel, just like they talk about over at Celsius. So it's a never ending process. I think this is huge. Um, and of course, I mean, it's huge for PayPal, that's for sure. It's also big for us. But they're not going to stop. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you see an ad in the Super Bowl. Let me just think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, Paul Tudor Jones hints at some fractals and possible Bitcoin rally. I didn't, I didn't really think I was going to cover this one because I think it's kind of just goofy. I mean, fractals are great. Uh, it's one of the things that actually uh, based my uh, exit strategies for, for uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. Also, somebody asked me, they go, hey, Rob, uh, it sounds like... Uh, you know, your your exit strategy should come into play because, you know, Bitcoin's at, uh, it was 19.8 or whatever else it was. So did you sell 20%? First of all, it's at 19.9. And I'm not selling 20% off the bat. I'm selling 10%. And here's my exit strategy for Bitcoin. You can find uh, my Bitcoin, XRP, and Ethereum exit strategies in all the descriptions of all my videos. So, but yeah, uh, it's uh, getting ready to be sold. So we'll see. I'll have a small amount of profit and I'll be very happy. But Right now, didn't hit that number, uh, but very, very close. Probably next week. So anyhow, here's the fractal. And what he's talking about, he's saying, well, just because how gold, uh, you're looking at between 75 and 77, gold went exponentially higher uh, moving on from 1977 and forward. And we can kind of take a look at the same thing. 2018 to 2020, there was a big, bit of a lull here, 73 to 75, then a little sideways, a little dip, just like here, sideways and dip. Then it went up and now here we are just like gold and you see where gold went. So it's saying, well, if gold went this way and because Bitcoin is essentially uh, gold 2.0, it's a pretty good store of value. Also, it's a lot easier to transport than gold, have it much more divisible and much more easier than gold. You don't have to melt it down. And of course, it's great because you can send it to anyone, anywhere in the world at any time in less than 30 minutes for next to nothing. You can send, I'm, there was a tweet that someone said, I just sent $10 million across the world for uh, less than a cup of coffee at uh, Starbucks. <laughs> Try doing that with gold. And then, of course, the big thing with uh, Bitcoin versus gold is that uh, gold is scarce, but we still keep finding it. So I don't know if it's really that scarce. And then uh, gold or Bitcoin isn't scarce. It's not. It's not scarce. It's finite. It's set. There is never going to be any more than 21 million. So I think when people say scarce, and even I sometimes say scarce, uh, it's not scarce. Uh, it's limited. It's finite. It's, uh, it's just one number, and that's all there will ever be uh, for all time. So that's pretty much the whole article. The, let's see, was there anything else? Not really. Well, there was one pretty cool thing. This uh, Suzu, the CEO of Three Arrows Capital, uh, pretty big, large um, hedge fund in the cryptocurrency space talks about uh, the fractals, but this was the, the good part. It states, there's also a massive gap between the valuation of Bitcoin and gold. Currently, gold's market cap is 
9 trillion, uh, which is not true. Uh, so actually, here's my favorite uh, uh, visual, Money and Markets. This was from six months ago, May 27th. And they're stating that uh, gold is about 11 trillion. So that's a ton. And right now, our entire market cap for, for Bitcoin, what are we looking at? Now, oh, let me change it over to the dollars. I, it's almost 600 billion. So 600 billion, that's not bad, but that's not 11 trillion good. So if Bitcoin and cryptocurrency can kind of sneak in there and get, uh, I don't know, half of that, that's 5 trillion. Uh, you're looking at a 250,000 plus uh, Bitcoin. And um, there's really no stopping it. So again, when I talk about uh, valuations and uh, upside potential, if you look at what's going on between Bitcoin and gold, I mean, you can invest. I have gold. I have gold and silver. Um, but the upside potential of Bitcoin and crypto assets are just astronomically higher. So I don't know. I mean, you, it's almost irresponsible for you not to invest into it. Now, I could be wrong. Let me know in the comment section. But there is one piece. Then I'll leave off with this. I actually saw this tweet last night that uh, Powell had said that, you know, he had you know, gotten rid of his gold. And I said, hey, that's pretty good. Got rid of your useless gold. While you're at it, why not throw away your Blockbuster card and your MySpace account? And it was just in fun. It was just a joke. But uh, somebody came in, Oscar, and he had a good question. He says, hey, what would you do if you had over 100000 in gold? Would you sell it all and get it in Bitcoin or sell a percentage? I said, to be honest, you, I'm going to keep my positions in gold because you never know. You never know what's going to happen. I'm not going to sell 100%. That's just not how I operate. Some people can, and that's fine. I'm just more of a cautious person. So I said, you know, a 90-10 split's pretty good. 80-20 isn't bad. You could do that. 80% uh, Bitcoin, 20 gold, or 90-10, whatever you want to do. But again, remember, Bitcoin's been around for thousands of years, and it's not going to get phased out tomorrow. So that's just how it is. So play your cards right, uh, and that's how I'm going to play mine. You can do whatever you want to, right? And there's this last part here where Oscar said, thanks. I wish I would listen to you instead of some other guy. I got all that gold instead of Bitcoin back in June. So he bought a bunch of gold back in June. So my portfolio would have been much better if I listened to you. And I don't think gold has gone up that much. And uh, it's just one of those things where it's just, you know, who are you going to listen to? Who do you trust? Who do you think has the best answers? And and when you do your own research, you know, where all that information that you compile you know, how do you disseminate that and actually get it into a, a working functional thought as far as an investment strategy? I, I can't answer that for you. It's all up to you. So that's it for that. Now I want to break into real quick and talk about how to transfer XRP to Celsius because people are having problems for some reason. I mean, it does happen. Everybody's different. So let's just go over that real quick. Okay, so first thing, you want to open up Ledger Live. Okay, this is my Ledger Live. I'm going to type in my password. This is one of my ledgers and I've got 5% of XRP on here. Okay, so let's move some XRP over to Celsius. How do I do that? Well, I want to click on send. I don't want to do Bitcoin. I want to do XRP. And it's going to ask me for a recipient address. So that's where I need to go to my wallet, whichever wallet that I'm trying to transfer this to. This could be the Coinbase wallet, this could be Coinbase, this could be Gemini, this is going to be Celsius. You just open that up. So I'm going to open up Celsius and I'm going to open up the XRP portion of Celsius. I'm going to click on transfer in the top left hand corner. And it's going to tell me don't transfer anything but XRP. Got it. Continue. Destination tag is required. So you got to know this. Sending any of the digital assets to this specific address using a third party blockchain result on permanent loss. So you have to have a destination tag. I'll explain in a second. So you're going to click on I understand. And it's going to give you two things. And this is the only thing, this is the only difference between the XRP and everything else pretty much is that there's a destination tag which is on the top right here. And underneath that is the actual QR code. So we need both. So what it's asking for right here is both recipient address. And I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm going to make sure that's the right one. R, D, C, E, Z. That's it. The tag. I'm going to copy that as well. And I'm going to paste it right here. 292 blah, blah, blah. Right? I'm going to click on continue. And the amount I want to send, let's just send 100 XRP. Ooh, that's a lot. Let's just do 50. Okay, 32 bucks. Sure, network fee, pretty good. I like that. So then we're going to cl click on continue. From XRP to RDCEZ, that's right. Fees, total debit, great. Click on continue. Now, it's going to say, look, you have to go to your device. Your device, your nano ledger. I'm going to 
put in the my pin code because I need to do that first. One, two, three, four, five. Just kidding. That's not what it is. And it's going to say open app XRP, which I will open that app. And it's going to say loading because what does your Nano Ledger do? It just allows you to spend or send your crypto. Crypto doesn't live here. It just is available. So you can actually sign a transaction so you can send your cryptocurrency. All right. Transaction type payment amount, and it's you're going to go through left to right. You're going to click on the right button amount one of three blah 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 account two of three it's going to go through this whole thing account three of three you're going to keep clicking to the right it says to click two buttons right there but you have to click keep clicking the right first until it says destination tag amount fee all that stuff and then you're going to do it again <laughs> it's like you got to keep scrolling to click the right button until it says there's two options sign transaction or reject when you see that check mark where it says sign transaction you're going to press both buttons it's going to sign it and off it goes. Huh. And if this kind of error message comes up, no big deal, you're gonna do it again. Ledger's not 100% perfect. Something may have gone wrong internally, no big deal. Do the same steps again, and we'll click on the both buttons to confirm the transaction. And transaction sent. So that's it, that's all you gotta do. Pretty simple, easy peasy lemon squeezy. That is it for today's video. I know it's kind of a bit fast, I got a lot of things going on and I uh, just had to get through this because it was an important day. And uh, we're reaching all time highs and this is great. So thanks so much for hanging with me, I appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one.